Okay, everybody, this is part three of the shoe rack that I made. This will be the uh, assembly of the shelves and the rails you saw me make prior. Um, and uh, that's the finishing of the rack and putting it together. So watch right to the end um, if, you, if you enjoy the video. Um, and uh, at the end, I just put a little clip at the end of us setting it up and uh, seeing it all finished. So anyway, um, so I've got the shelves were made and all 10 in the last video. So in this video, I'm, I've drilled out my... Uh, I guess anti-split measure. Um, you always do that when you do a wedge tenon so you don't chance splitting the workpiece with your wedge when you push it in there. So I've uh, drilled those and I'm uh, slicing the chamfer out. And you don't always have to do this chamfer. Well, most of the time you don't. But I wanted a thicker wedge. I wanted it to be more pronounced. So I went ahead and um, cut like a five degree uh, wedge into all of my tenons. And I also felt like that gave me a little bit more flexibility to really push the tendons in there, um, wedge them in there with the glue. So, um, so as we finish this up, I'll I'll get to uh, gluing it here. And I, um, yeah, as you'll see, I cut these all flush with the uh, with the side side rails that they mortise into, um, that they tendon into. And uh, originally, my intent was to actually leave them stubbed like I did the main ones. But I had I ended up putting a couple shelves together before I realized it was going to be a real pain to try to shape all of those tenons that were coming through in situ. So I decided, uh, I just decided to go ahead and cut them flush. So um, I went ahead and just I, I left the side ones flush it's still a detail you can still appreciate it but it would have taken me forever I mean as I said there's eight shelves they are three tenons per shelf per side um, so you know you've got um, 48 tenons on this piece in total so it was a lot of work I had so many so much footage for this because I recorded it start to finish uh, as, as I built it so so yeah and, uh, and another unfortunate thing is I, do, I can't find it anywhere, but if you look at the end cap there, so I've shaped those side rails since the last video, and I cannot find the footage anywhere, so I don't know if the camera wasn't on or, or what happened there, but um, that was just a, just a stepped pattern I came up with. I liked it. I, I played around with it for about an hour. Um, once I was happy with it, I made a template. I just used a bushing and my uh, three-quarter inch end mill and uh, and went ahead and shaped them all in place but um, I did take most of the material out with the uh, with a drill press um, I hogged out some key hole locations with a drill press and then used a jigsaw to chunk it out so that I had just the bare minimum to take off with the router bit otherwise it would have been quite a project So if you've done wedge tenons, you know as I'm doing this, I'm listening very carefully as I pound these wedges in. They have a distinct sound when they're completely set, and you'll hear it right there. Hear that? That's a dead. Once that sound, uh, once it makes that sound, you're done. So this is how I made the wedges. I wanted to show this in detail. So at first I cut, I think it was like an inch and a half wide piece of mahogany. It's a it's a eight, uh, five, five quarter piece of mahogany. I set my saw to my one degree bevel or two degree. I can't remember exactly. And then all I do is just flip and rotate the piece around and keep cutting. And I have these nice, these wedges. And because they're five quarter thick, um, I just pencil line down the center, which you'll see here in a second. And, uh, and then I can slice them in half. So I end up with two wedges per slice on the saw. So it's just a quick, easy way to cut your splines in a safe manner. Once I got down to a short piece at the end there, I just use a third finger, um, like, you know, like a stick or something to hold it. So I'm not, my, I don't have my fingers right next to the blade. So here I'm marking the centers um, just by eye. Uh, and 
I didn't put it in here, but basically I, I roughed them in half like this. I sliced them in half. I break them in half. And then what I would do is I'd just take one of my side rails with my 7 16 mortises and my little Lee Nielsen rabbiting jack plane. And I would just, uh, mahogany is pretty soft. It's pretty easy to plane. So I would just take them by hand and just run them through the planer. Um, through the plane knife uh, until I had a, a perfect fit into the into the seven sixteenths mortises, and that way I knew they were pre pre fit and ready to go uh, when I was actually doing glue up. So I wasn't sitting there while I was trying to glue shaving down wedges to fit in the mortises. And again, it's mahogany; it's pretty straight grain. So once you slice, once I slice them with a knife I score them. They're pretty easy to snap. And this is what I referred to earlier. So originally I was going to stub these tenons, but um, like I said, I, I just started looking at them and I realized, man, 48 of these things to to try to cut to the same height and then and then just ease the edges on, um, that would have been a lot of work. So I already had way too much time invested into this shoe rack to begin with. So. I just cut them off flush. And it's still, like I said, it's still a beautiful detail. And none of this is necessary, as I'm sure you can see. This is all, this was just purely aesthetic. I mean, you could, I could have hidden all these mortises and things like that, so. So these are the assembled shelves, and I did this same thing now. Uh, I did the same thing with my wedging for my rails that go into the front and back legs, um, but I did chamfer, which you'll see here in a second. I did pre-chamfer my tenons that come through, and this is how this is how I did that. So uh, that's actually a scrap from the leg cutoffs, so it's the exact height of the legs. So I used, I intentionally used that thick pencil to give myself a little bit of room so I wasn't, I didn't um, over chamfer so I would, you know, be recessed down into the, t into the mortise of the leg before it started. I wanted to make sure that they were proud. So just use that leg scrap, put a thick line on there and then approach that line carefully making sure I did not jump over it. And I probably could have used like a trim, you know, a little my one of my Colt, uh, little Colt routers, uh, with a with a chamfer bit in it to try to do this, but I didn't want to see the uh, mill marks from it, so it just made more sense to me to just do it by hand. And then, like I said, there's uh, there's, a, there's eight eight shelves, so um, 36 of these to do. And then I just flatten the tops off after I had my my chamfer look good. I already showed this on the uh, on the. Um, shelf to rail connections but I just wanted to show you I used a uh, my Lee Nelson dovetail saw I prefer for horizontal um, pieces that are laid horizontal and then I'll use my Japanese saw for vertical stuff because it's a push or a pull pull saw rather than the push saw so this is an oversight on my part I intended to ease the edges ahead of time I forgot um, and so this is what I did I just ran my chamfer bit down the edges of the shelves and then came in and uh, finished them up with a chisel and my um, block plane. So you're not going to see um, any sanding of the piece. Um, originally I actually started sanding the shelves and I ended up opting to use my card scraper. So this piece is completely finished with a card scraper. 
Um, I wasn't I wasn't sure the soft would, you know, it, this is all larch and fir lumber, construction grade lumber. Uh, card scrapers are are not super at that, so at uh, scraping softwoods, but I found on, especially on the end grain, on those profiled rails on the bottom edges there, the card scraper worked really well at cleaning that up, and as well as the tenon, um, the flush tenons on the shelf to rail connections. So this piece is all um, hand scraped, top to bottom. So I started out on the bench putting this together, and this is going to be the only time lapse of the video. I time lapse the assembly so you could appreciate um, the uh, the whole thing come together because it was all really every piece is just a mirror image of the first one. Um, so it's a lot of like production, but it's it still takes forever. It's still time consuming. So, so my wife and I uh, sat down together and put this together. And even this took quite a while. So we're obviously cleaning the glue as we go. And um, it's on those front tenons. Like I said, I pre-chamfered them. I didn't want to have to come back and and do a lot of uh, finish work to them. So I just used a card scraper to clean them up. So I wanted to make sure that glue runoff, etc., was cleaned up very well. So we didn't have any discoloration. There we go. So, so even though I clamped the front there, I tried to do this as quick as I could so I could get those clamps and really squeeze everything together just to make sure there were no gaps. So everything came together real nice. Um, really, there weren't any major uh, regrets. You know, the, the larch is a little bit uh, brittle, so sometimes it's easy to chip. Um, so I had a couple like, chips and things, different spots, uh, maybe like three, I think. But they were, they were pretty much dealt with through the machining process as, uh, as different layers got taken off, so. So this is the finished piece. Boys are helping me take the clamps off. This is prior to uh, applying a finish. So I'm going to apply a coat of tongue oil to the shelf, top to bottom. I like to do. Uh, I like always like to get an oil on there if I can, just uh, because it penetrates and really brings out the color and the depth of the grain. And then I'll wait 24 hours and make sure that the uh, any oils have have uh, wicked off and then I'll come through and I'll do my poly coat and in this case because it is a shoe rack and it's gonna take um, it's gonna have wet wet boots and shoes on it potentially um, I made sure I coated it uh, with three three coats of poly this is the tongue oil and this took forever um, like I said it that's my daughter's cat helping me finish the shelf. I thought the cat would run away from the smell of the tongue oil, but didn't bother her a bit. So I was surprised with the fur and larch that uh, the color came out as well as it did. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really a fan of, of pine in general. I much prefer working with hardwood, but as you can see by the shop, this is in the schoolhouse that I'm rehabbing right now. Um, I have my wood shop set up in one of the old classrooms, which I hadn't had any work to do in just yet, so I was using that. Um, the shop is, if you look behind me there, actually through that window, the shop's back there, um, but I still don't have cement down. And you know, time and finances just don't provide for it right now. So we're uh, just making do like this until I can get that concrete. Pile, 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 pile! Hurry, hurry, hurry! Wait, Mommy, oh, like it. Right, right, right. Mommy like it. Mommy like it. Over here, bud. Over here. Right, Over here. So this is downstairs in the schoolhouse, and we're currently occupying it while we work on it. So. Um, I was just, the shoe rack was a must. We were tired of uh, tripping over Armageddon shoes.
and there we have it. We defeated the shoe monster because in a family of six, a, a family of six kids and two adults, shoes are a crisis.